Good morning, church. John chapter 15, starting in verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away, and every branch he that bear every branch that beareth fruit he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you, except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same shall bring forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. I'm going to stop there. Father, we come before you in the name of your Son, Jesus, Lord. Father, I ask you anoint me to preach. Anoint your people to hear, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Branch in itself cannot produce fruit. It's got to be connected to the vine. That vine is Christ. Meaning that we cannot produce righteousness or the fruit of the Spirit without properly being in Christ. We can try to, to better ourselves we can't. The Bible says, if he abide not in me, he's not going to produce fruit. And the, and, and the branch that, that does not produce fruit is withered and men gather them and cast them into the fire that they may be burned. See, we can detach ourselves from the true vine. We can, we can lose faith and walk away from the Lord. But that's not his desire. His desire is that we stay in the vine and properly pruned and purged. That way we produce more fruit. Her, the, the, the purging hurts because it's him trimming all the stuff out of us that doesn't need to be there. And it hurts, but it is necessary for us to produce more fruit. For us to be molded and 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 Molded is the right word there. Molded into the image of Christ. It is necessary for him to purge us. Purge us. And, and he clips. And that clipping hurts. But it is necessary for us to continue to grow. The Bible says that. By the watering of the word. The vine has to be watered for it to properly grow. The branches have, the vine has to be properly watered so that the branches can grow the way they need to grow. How do we know we're staying watered? We're staying in his word. We're seeking his face. If we're not grow, if, the Bible says, if a man abideth not in me, he is the husbandman. God the Father is the husbandman here. Christ is the vine and we are the branches. And we can decide to no longer be a part of the vine. 
And what happens is we stop studying, we stop praying, and we begin to wither. And when we begin to wither, we die. And when we die, that part of the vine has to be cut off or the dying process will spread throughout the entirety of the vine. So that one little limb has to be cut off. That is dead. That is decaying. Because if it's not cut off, the decay that is in that one branch will spread to the entirety of the vine. So he has to cut and purge and, and, and water and tend to his vine. He is like a gardener here. We, we, we're like his plants. He's got to tend to us and feed us properly and water us. But at the same time, we have to take the responsibility to study and to pray and to develop the relationship. He's not going to force us to be watered if we don't want to be watered. He's not going to force feed us if we're not if we're not wanting to be fed. So he gives us a warning here. If you abide in me. He wouldn't have said if here if it's not possible for us to be cut off. We have a personal responsibility with our relationship with the Lord. It has to be taken care of. He's not an automatic guy. He's not going to do all this if we do not want it done. And there are little stragglers of, of these little strange little vines that we've allowed to be planted that he's having to purge off of us. And we want to keep them. Not realizing if we don't allow him to deal with them. They grow and eventually will destroy the entirety of the vine. The Bible says. He chastises those he loves. He's not trimming us. And, and, and purging of the wild vine for no reason. The Bible says it's, it's for us to be able to grow and, and produce more fruit. He's not purging us to hurt us, church. He's purging us. So that that thing that is is withered and needs to be cut off so we can produce more Christ likeness and more fruit. Despise not the cutting. Despise not the, 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 the purging because it is necessary. This Christian walk is not all. the top of the mountain. We will have valley experiences. We will have backside of the desert experiences. Job said, though you slay me, yet will I trust you. Or I don't understand why you're doing what you're doing, but even though I trust you even in the unknown. I feel like you're crushing me. I feel like you're killing me. And you're allowing the enemy to, to, to have too much latitude. You're allowing the enemy to have too much latitude. 
And at the end of it, Job said, Though you slay me, yet will I trust you. Trust is hard when we're going through the purging process. Trust is hard when we're on the backside of the desert and can't see any way out. Trust is hard when we're in Babylonian captivity and we can't see any way out. Trust is hard when we're when we're in the Garden of Gethsemane and, and, and we come to the place of nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. It takes trust and faith to believe, Lord, even though I can't see what you're doing, I am trusting you to lead me out. I am trusting you to lead me through this trial and this temptation and this backside of the desert wilderness. But he purges us. He has to clip things out of us that does not need to be there in order that it may grow our faith and as a result of growing our faith produce more fruit and ultimately strengthen our walk with him. He is the husbandman. Christ is the vine. The father is the husbandman. And notice what verse 2 of chapter 15 says. Every branch in me, in me signifies we've been saved. He's not talking to unbelievers here, church. In me. That beareth not fruit, he taketh it away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Abide in me and I in you. It's what scholars call the divine entanglement. Christ, God is in the, the Father is in the Son, the Son is in, the, in us, and the Holy Spirit is in us. We are in Christ by virtue of our faith. We are hidden in Christ, Paul would tell us. And, 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 and we say, well, why is the purging necessary? Why is the, the, the purging and the, the, the cutting away of things necessary? Because we were born sinful. And even though we now have the divine nature on the inside of us, the sin nature is still there. The clinging vines of the fall are still there. And if those clinging vines of the fall are not cut away, they have a tendency to attach ourselves themselves to faith and end up swallowing up what the Lord has promised us he will do. And we will find ourselves being dominated by sin, by the flesh. That is not his intention. We are meant to be dominated by the Spirit of the Lord. Now, it, does that happen 100% of the time? No. Because we are still human beings.
So he has to continually purge us of us. He has to continually go in and trim a little bit at a time the clinging vines of the fall so that the vines and the branches can now produce more fruit. They're no longer corrupted by sin because we're allowing him to purge them. We're allowing him to go in and cut the dead and dry branches out of us that are not pleasing to him. In order that we may bring forth more fruit. Abide in me. Even when he's cutting away the the straggling vine that is not that is sucking nutrients out of what he's already produced and he's cutting those dead vines off, it's uncomfortable and we tend to our faith tends to be shaken. But it is never his intention to leave us in that position. If we can deal with the purging, if we can deal with the cutting away, we will produce more fruit. And as long as we stay connected to the vine and are in our word and studying and praying, notice what verse 8 says. Herein is my Father glorified that you may bear much fruit. That's why he purges. That's why he cuts away things that are not pleasing to him. It is to mold us and to, to develop us into more into the image of Christ so that we may produce more fruit. Despise not the purging. Because at the end of the purging, we will have more fruit. And prayerfully be closer to the Lord than we were when we were going through the purging process. He doesn't purge us to hurt us. It may not feel good when he's doing it, but he's doing it <clears throat> so that we bear much fruit. I'm reminded of, of, of Jacob when he wrestled with the Lord. He walked with a limp the rest of his life. But he would remember that night and his faith would be strengthened. And there is no record after that night that he ever... No, I'm not going to say it that way. Because he did. There's no record after that night he ever lost faith. He had a little bit of question, but he never lost faith. He might have walked with the limp the rest of his life, but he knew that God was with him. Likewise, church, we may walk with a limp. But it's his intention that we may know him. We might have wrestled with him all night long. 
so that he had to touch the hollow of our thigh. But we would never forget that night. Don't despise the purging. Because if we if we're not properly purged of the of the of the vines that are the, of the wild vines that that are not pleasing to him, what happens is they continue to grow and eventually they overgrow and take over the vines that he's planted that are his. It is better to allow him to cut away the vines that aren't producing fruit or the branches that aren't producing fruit than to allow them to stay and overrun the whole vine and eventually that whole vine doesn't even produce fruit. Despise not the purging. Because it is necessary to bring us into the image of Christ. It is necessary to show us exactly who we serve. He's not purging us to destroy us. It may feel like it because it's not comfortable when he starts cutting away things. Not comfortable. But at the end of the purging process, we will come forth as gold tried in the fire. Because we have chosen to abide in him. Notice what he said. If a man abides in him. Which means this. We can come to a place with the purging and with our faith that, Lord, this is no longer comfortable. I can't do this anymore. And we throw over our faith. And the Bible says there that if we do, we become withered. If a man abide not in me. See, he's still in the vineyard. He's still laying there in the vineyard. But that one branch has been cut off. He has removed himself from the vine. He's still in the vineyard, but he's no longer receiving life uh, nutrients from the vine itself because he has chosen not to abide. If a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burnt. See, the only thing that can keep us from being withered is to abide in the, in the vine. Not to remove ourselves from the vine because he's purging us. But to remain in the vine so we can be fed the nutrients that we need to produce the fruit. If a vine, if a branch is cut off and doesn't have nutrients, it is dead. And dead branches are good for nothing. Yes, they're still technically in the vineyard. 
but they have they have disconnected themselves from the vine. They're laying in the vineyard. But they're no longer connected to the vine. And he says here, they're worth nothing. They're withered and men gather them and cast them into the fire. They're still laying in the vineyard. Until the husbandman comes in and notices they're no longer connected to the vine. And he picks them up and he throws them into the fire. Because they're no longer producing fruit. They're no longer getting fed the nutrients they need to be fed to produce the fruit of the vine. Because they have chosen to remove themselves from the vine itself, which is Christ. Nobody can remove us from that vine except us. And he, look, y'all, the purging, and I keep coming back to this, the purging is not easy. But it is necessary. But see, that's where the majority of people, that they struggle because, Lord, they've been taught, Lord, this Christian walk is all mountaintop. There's no valleys. There's no deserts. There's no... That's not biblical Christianity. You will have valleys and deserts you've got to go through but the the beautiful thing is even though we're 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 traveling through we're traveling through the valley of baca turn turn to psalm 86 i believe it is Uh, it's not Psalm 86. But one of the Psalms says, even though we go through the Valley of Baca, the Valley of Baca was bitter. But it was necessary. It is necessary to go through the hardships of life because we realize who we are and who he is. We realize in the, in the adversity that, Lord, we can't fix this ourselves. We can't fix this ourselves. But you can It's necessary to have both the hills, both the mountaintops, and the valleys. Because we don't learn while we're on the mountaintop. We don't learn He's Jehovah Jireh, the Lord my provider, unless we've got to offer up Isaac. How did you catch that? Abraham would have never 
known God as Jehovah Jireh, the Lord my provider, had he not obeyed the Lord when the Lord said, go up to Mount Moriah and offer your son. He could have refused and said, Lord, I'm not doing that, no. But he would have never known God as Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, my provider. So when he takes us through the Valley of Baca, when he takes us through the, 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 the purging process, it is for a reason. It is to show us more of him. It is to prayerfully strengthen our faith and strengthen our relationship. And ultimately, to bring forth more fruit. But it's not easy to withstand the purging. But it is necessary. It is necessary for him to purge the dead, dry vines in us that are not pleasing to him. And church, let me tell you something. He is a good husband. He is a good husbandman, which means... He may purge it, but then he'll water it and allow it to grow and give it the nutrients that it needs because it's back on the vine. See, these little stragglers are not taking up the energy of the vine itself because they've now been gotten rid of. And the, vi the, the, the branches that are producing the fruit now get more nutrients despise not the purging because in the end we will bring forth more fruit and prayerfully be closer to our father than we were before don't Disconnect yourself from the vine because he's purging you. Don't overthrow your faith because you're, you're being purged and it's uncomfortable. Stay connected to the vine so that you can have the nutrients you need to grow and produce more fruit. So that he can water you and give you the nutrients that you need because you're connected to the vine. The branch cannot live outside of the vine. We, we disconnect ourselves from the vine and we die. We shrivel and we die. So is it better to be purged and for that for that little bit of time of, of Lord, this is uncomfortable? Or do we remove ourselves completely and die? We're in the vine, we're in the vineyard, but we've disconnected ourselves. And we're slowly dying. And we don't even realize we're slowly dying until he picks us up and throws us into the fire because we're no longer producing. We're dead. Abide in the vine. Withstand the purging process with the, with the, with the knowledge that, hey, Lord, 
you may be purging me, but ultimately it is for my good to produce more fruit. Father, I come before you in the name of your son, Jesus, Lord. Father, thank you for the purging. Thank you for being the husbandman to the vine. Thank you for allowing us to produce fruit unto you, Father. And Lord, teach us to despise not the purging and the clipping, even though it is painful at the time. Let us see the end result and the more fruit that prayerfully it will produce in us as we abide in the vine. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. I will see y'all Wednesday night.